I'm a huge fan of both of yours, but you're an unlikely pairing on a certain level. People know you as a pop star, they, people love your voice, people know you as a comic legend. How did the two of you meet? How did you start working together? As, as the way everyone meets, dinner. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I sat next to Steve and we, we were actually at a table with a lot of other people, but Steve was the only person to offer me these garlic crackers. <laughs> wow. Very suave. Very well said, done. I should have said dinner is the way people used to meet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now they I don't have an app called her. dinner. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's just D-I-N-N-R. Mm -hmm. So it was magic at first cracker? Like... It was. I, yeah. I felt really shy around it, but when he offered me that cracker, he really... But we, you know, I, I think I'm a shy person too, especially in social situations for a while. And so we didn't, I don't know if we talked that much. We probably talked a little bit. Like about me and things like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, but then later, about five years ago, we met again at a birthday party, and Edie came up and uh, said, I really enjoyed your last album, which was a bluegrass record I did with the Steep Canyon Rangers. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and, and she said, I'm filling you in. I would say, would you ever like to write a song together? And I had only written songs alone, so I had no concept of how to write a song with somebody, but I said, Sure. <laughs> and we followed through. And now, did you know him as a musician at all before this? No, I listened to his record on the way into New York City to that party, and I was blown away by his songwriting. I thought it was great, and I heard other singers on the record, so I thought, that would be a really fun she, thing to she do. Was, she was thinking, if I'm having dinner with this guy, I better brush up on him. <laughs> now, uh, now, when you listen, was this, this was the, with the Steep Canyon Rangers, his That's banjo right. playing, That's does right. it ever surprise you, because it surprised a lot of people, um, when you hear Steve play the banjo, you keep on waiting for the joke to happen. You know, like, has that been a problem? People are like, ha-ha, now you know, when does it of, get funny? A lot funny? of the songs I write are kind of funny, but some of them are, are serious, so it's all over the place. But, you know, when you're writing music, it's a very different mm -hmm. animal because people like music. <laughs> <laughs> and they hate, hate comedy, so... Mm -hmm. uh, that's, you know, it's never been a problem. We, we do our show, but I do a lot of jokes on our show with the Steep Canyon Rangers, and I travel with Marty Short, and we do a lot of jokes there, and, and you know, play typical, oh. Well, this is your latest album together, uh, So Familiar. Was I boring? What? <laughs> no, not at all. I was, I was, I was riding, I was oh, riding the wave the of how interesting you were. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> to bring us to, uh, to, to bring us back to you again. Oh, wow. Yes. And now, as I said before, you have a, a musical at the Court Theater called Bright Star. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah. And congratulations. Congratulations yeah. to the musical. It opens, it opens next week, but it's in previews now, so you could even go tomorrow. Now, now how does the process work? Are you going to go tomorrow? <laughs> yes, I am. Yeah, thank yes, you. I am. I'm going to go tomorrow. Uh, how does the process work? Like, do you write the music? Do you write the lyrics? How does, how does this work? You talk. I've talked quite a bit. Especially if you let write the lyrics, you should probably talk. Let me just talk. say something. <laughs> She's very modest, but she writes all the lyrics in the show. I love it. I love our show so much. I love our musical. I love everybody in it. I love our whole creative team. This guy, everything is really fun. He'll send me banjo tunes, and they'll have the perfect tone, and I'll be able to sing a character's heart. How do, how, does the, how do the lyrics come to you? Do you like listen to the music first and you have images or what, what, what is the, well, what's the process? Well, with our first record, uh, I would, it was as if somebody turned a projector in my, on in my mind. I just saw little movies and all I had to do was sing them out. But for the musical, obviously I'm thinking in terms of our characters and their stories and how they feel. Um, the, uh, the, the thing that uh, is surprising to me is that you, you don't write lyrics to your songs normally? No, I do. I do write lyrics. But in the case of the musical, Edie writes the lyrics and we co-write the music together, except she has a couple of songs she wrote by herself in there. Now, and now, they're I, not very good, I gotta tell you. <laughs> yeah. Now, I understand this is, based on, this, is, this is based on a true story. This is like, this is something actually happened, a very actually, tragic story. It's, it's based on, a, not on a true story, but on a true event. And What's just, the difference between those two? An event is an incident, but you may not know the facts. You know, like if somebody falls off a building, you don't know, uh, like I'm going to do tonight. Uh, 
you yeah. don't know what led up to that and mm -hmm. what was the aftermath. But the event that Edie discovered in the, in, in the news from 1904 was that a baby had been discovered in a suitcase that had been thrown from, the train, from a train. And, and the, the baby, baby lived. Was alive. The baby alive. lived and was raised by a different family. And this was an absolutely true story, but they never figured out what happened. How did you find the story? What, what led you to the story? Steve sent a banjo tune, and I heard myself in this one part singing "Woo!" -woo, -woo and I thought it sounded. I wish I had like a, a banjo here. I didn't. I didn't bring my banjo out. Oh, I always keep a banjo back here. Would oh. you like a? <laughs> I, oh, you. It's a really nice one. Please be careful. Thank you. Please be careful. I thought, I thought that about you, that you always yeah. kept the banjo oh, yeah. handy. I don't play, I just keep a banjo yeah. back here. I mean, that In case be somebody a... rushes the stage, yeah. I take them out with it. <laughs> could be a result of the cold medicine. Yeah, yeah. could be. I None mean, of this may be happening. I don't even know if I... <laughs> Wake up! Wake up, Stephen! <laughs> you don't know. Yeah. You don't really know. You don't really know. You're not in Kansas anymore. Yeah. Uh, there was this little bit. I'll play it really quickly. Do you mind? Here. Please. Woo, woo, baby. And, uh, woo, woo. Woo, woo, baby. And that led to a story well, for you. Well, tell how. Okay, well, the woo woo part sounded a little bit like a trend. This was the first tune that he sent where I didn't get that projector sense of imagery. So I said, well, that sounds a little bit like a train to me with woo woo. Maybe I'll write a train song. And so I Googled names of Southern trains because I wanted to find a real train and to see where it ran. And the first train that caught my eye was the Iron Mountain. And when you click on the Iron Mountain, it offers this story of the Iron Mountain baby about this baby who had been thrown off of the Iron Mountain. And I said, that's an incredible story for a song. Plus, the woman who raised the baby was named Sarah Jane. And I said, her name rhymes with train. This has got to happen. <laughs> well, it did. It's called Bright Star at the Ford Theater.